this kind of growth uh, of middle class income, the number of people in middle class and the per capita income, what kind of challenges will it exert for the state when it comes to infrastructure, when it comes to urban India, when it comes to our cities which many of them are already creaking uh, very, very badly. Uh, what would the government and the institutional response be required for such a middle class in India? Yes, I think see at the end of the day, uh, if you have a tax efficient which is efficient today, uh, which actually is, uh, I mean, uh, most of the, uh, the I mean, uh, the, uh, the, the income sources are now being tracked, or so, I mean, the way in terms of refund also, in terms of processing also. I think what is also important that uh, we build up the necessary infrastructure, because at the end of the day, uh, if a, such a large population comes to the uh, metropolitan cities, I think it will put a pressure. That's why, uh, and this makes, us, makes me to answer one more point, I think that's why we'll find that there's also a lot of development which is happening in tier 2 and tier 3 cities today. What kind of numbers are you estimating when it comes to the size uh, of uh, the Indian economy uh, in the same time frame? You did mention third largest by 2027, but just some numbers because uh, Dr. Ghosh, you have seen there are various estimates and hopefully if you have uh, some numbers which you could share with us. See, I think we had done a uh, backstop calculation for this estimate. Uh, our sense is that the economy size of the economy could be any, anywhere between 20 to 25 trillion. Uh, and But that is based on an extended depreciation of 1.5 to 2 percent every year. My sense is that this number could actually go higher if the exchange rate, and we are assuming an exchange rate of 115 to 120 by 2047, so at the current rate. So my sense is that if the economy uh, starts to fire uh, the way it is doing, and in that sense, there could be always an upward pressure on the currency. That means the currency could actually appreciate. And if the currency appreciates, then there could be uh, that could actually act as an enabler for us to have a size of the economy, which could be far larger than some of the projections. There is also likely to be a rise in inflation. And this is already a concern as you can see uh, with the recent spurt due to uh, certain issues in vegetables and uh, allied products. What what will happen to prices in India in this same time frame, Dr. Ghosh? No, I think this is a very relevant question. Unfortunately, today, if we look at the inflation numbers, we are in a paradox whereby the core inflation, which is basically an indicator of uh, the, the, the monetary policy impact, is actually running below 5%. It is at 4.9%, while food inflation is at uh, more than 11 percent and overall headline inflation is at 7.44 percent. So I have never seen such a significant divergence in these two numbers in the last 10 years from where this number was started to get released. Now having said that, I think this again talks about the importance of reforms in the agricultural sector. I think uh, the problem today is that uh, the farmers uh, don't get the rate, sometimes don't get the remuneration, even though the enum market which has been implemented by the government, if you look into the data, we'll find some interesting insights where the prices are actually higher than the MSP. But uh, even if I take that into consideration, I think it is important that the agricultural produce is allowed to be sell, sold in any part of the country as is being, uh, which is not the norm today. Until and unless we allow the price discovery to happen in the agricultural sector, I think this problem will continue to happen. And they also, I would like to end by saying that you are asking of the share of the agricultural sector. I think that's why there has been a lot of development in the allied activities in the last 20 years and uh, last 10 years. And my hope is that uh, as these allied activities get enlarged, at some point of time, there will be some correlation between the, uh, the farm to fork as we call the common uh, trend in the rural sector and that will be the most beneficial for all of us. By when will we be officially as per the classification that is followed a developed country? Uh, I think, uh, see, the, uh, it's difficult to say but if I go by the definition, I think there is a large possibility that India could hit the tag. Uh, before that, much before that, what it's getting anticipated. But we have to get some of the things right. 
Uh, very honestly, if you ask me, I think when the pandemic started, all of us were staring at a double digit contraction, but the resilience was remarkable. They were uh, the, finally we contracted by 5.8 percent this year also last this year also take my word that the growth rate could be higher than 6.5 percent the RBI is projecting and uh, my sense is that if we are able to break this if we're able to maintain this trend in terms of uh, and the changes which we are trying to make it happen i think we could hit a developed country track much earlier than what is being currently projected If you like the video do like comment share and subscribe